Hey guys, it's me, it's your boy Nero here, and today I'm gonna show you how I play, without question, the absolute strongest strategy in all of Super Auto Pets. I've talked about this strategy before in a past video, but today we're gonna go in a little deeper and show you exactly the step-by-step -step process in a full gameplay guide of just how to do it yourself. And I've also shown you the easiest way to win in Super Auto Pets. And this isn't the easiest way, as it's definitely more complicated and takes a little bit more, let's say, skill. But when you get it going and actually understand how it works, it is definitely, without question, the strongest. Unless you just get constantly encountered by skunks, which in that case, you know, just break your keyboard and get mad at the game like me. All right, here we go. Starting for the strongest possible start, which is two otters into a fish, as this version of the otter strat. We're going to go over two separate versions. Number one, which is this, is the crab brigade strategy, and the second is the what I like to call the kangaroo jack build. The crab brigade strategy is definitely stronger in the mid to early game. Uh, it's not so hot late game as it really starts to fall off as you don't have enough attack damage, but the kangaroo jack one is less strong in the mid to early game, but way stronger in the late game. Um, which one is better is kind of hard to say. I The Crab Brigade one is definitely harder to pull off as you require a lot of health on your one main unit, which requires a lot of RNG as you have to get a lot of otters early. And here I got a lot of otters, a lot of fish, and then I got an early draft from combining my otters. So this was just like literally the dream start, but you definitely don't need to start this good. This it really is, barely even helps. It's like two or three extra HP on the crabs. Not a huge deal, definitely helps. Not a massive deal. Also, remember to freeze your cupcakes early, as you can always cupcake and then crab. That's why I'm freezing the cupcake here. Also, I sped everything up, so the audio is a little distorted. Uh, uh, whoops. You know, it's, I, I wanted to speed things up because I didn't want to waste too much time here. See, 315 crab. I should have cupcaked first, but I didn't have the gold. So I'm just going to wait until like, my next crab. Cupcake that crab. You'll see. It's, it's very it's very pog champ. Uh, and remember, I think I do this, but I, like you really, really want to make sure that you get a meat stick on the crab as soon as possible, as this is a huge, 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 huge buff to the crab, as it's really, its weakness is obviously having no attack. So the second you get a meat stick on that bad boy, wham, bam. Thank you, man. Also, the skunk is always really good. The problem with this build is that it is really, really countered by skunks pretty damn hard. Like, it's almost an auto loss once you go into a skunk, especially a skunk tiger. And it currently is kind of meta to run a skunk. So, and the reason it's meta is because this build is so OP. Like, look at a 1922. What is this, turn six? What is this, turn six? I think this is turn six. A 1922 in free to play, free to play version, not the, not the pay to win version, on turn seven. It was turn seven I had that. And now I have a bison with a level three fish and a meat stick crab. This is, is why it's just so freaking OP. We're gonna crush everything. Like nothing is gonna stand a chance. A, you invest massively into the front unit using otters, then you buff it up as much as absolute possible, then you get a crab, the crab gets the buff from the, the insane amount of HP of in the front unit, and then hopefully you get a level three with that, get a bison, get something else, get some more support units. Here we're getting a monkey, so we're gonna have an absolutely massive fish. Um, in my experience, going for the Third crab is always a bad idea, but you can definitely go for a second crab. I don't remember if I go for a second crab or not. It's been like two days since I played this. Uh, in fact, the new update is out, and I, I, I don't know if this is nerfed in the new update. I definitely would say it's not. However, you never know. Things are weird. Because there might be a new number one strategy. <clears throat> Maybe the rat, you know? Maybe the rat is OP now. But yeah, I'm pretty sure from here out, it's just basically, it's pretty obvious what you do, is you just buff everything. We're not even going to change our team. Our team doesn't need to be changed. We can definitely get rid of our, potentially our swan, but that's pretty much it. You don't want to get rid of anything else. Everything else is too OP. Yep, here I get rid of my swan. I'm going to grab some cows, buff the hell out of the bison, and I'm buffing the hell out of the bison, because the bison is going to beat that fish to 50-50, because it gets the plus four, plus four every round. So I might as well just start investing in the bison as it gets its own scaling, and it's just pretty much straight up stronger than the fish at this point. And uh, having all your units on one unit is usually actually stronger, unless, again, we just ran into a tiger skunk there, which tried to counter us and failed, because we're just a little too OP. We're getting a little bit too lucky this run. Um, don't worry, next run shows you what you can do with like kind of bad RNG and having to roll to start for the otters. And I think the next run is definitely something that's a little bit more commonly experienced. Here we just, you know, we just abuse the run otters into the front unit, buff the front unit again. I'm gonna I'm gonna cover the same exact theory a lot, but you just really want to make sure you get the front unit buffed as much as possible, grab some of them sexy ass crabs, and then just go to work, go to town on them. And then you're going to do this. You're just going to destroy everyone. 
and it's gonna be it's gonna be beautiful. And now we're into the kangaroo jack version. The kangaroo jack version, I had to roll a lot to get the kangaroo, or not the kangaroos, to get the otter. And then I got the otter on six gold, so I'm gonna buy two units, but it's fine, it's gonna work out. I get the team wet shirts, uh, as you do, you know, gotta go for those wet shirts. We're going to lose a lot, which is fine, but we get our otter on uh, the next one, and then we get two otters, which is pretty lucky, but again, we only get to buy two units, so it is what it is. Actually, I think we did get to buy three units there, because we have a level two otter. I actually don't know. I, I, my other thing is just so fast. This one's a little bit more slowed down because I feel like uh, the first one maybe was a little too fast. Couldn't really talk about what I was doing. Get a crap ton of otters. Getting really lucky now. Got two more otters and a mosquito. Uh, so now we have a big mosquito. Not nearly as big as our fish was because, again, uh, you know, we had to... Now I got a kangaroo. This is basically another perfect run, uh, by the way. So this is kind of the dream situation. However, uh, I just played two games and this is what happened. So, I, I, I don't know how applicable this is to the average game, but this is the dream situation. Get a level 3 otter, buff a mosquito uh, into, the, like, the high heavens. Then you put a kangaroo behind your big buffer, and what happens when you get a giant-ass mosquito like we have now in the early game that is so much stronger than every other unit, it usually gets to attack two, three, four, five times. And you know who loves when the front unit attacks? Pretty obvious, the kangaroo loves it when the front unit attacks. Here, I think we're going to get four attacks off. One... Two, three, ooh, four, and look at that bad boy, 10, 11. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And this is why this strategy is just like insanely OP. Also, bisons are obviously really strong uh, in this strategy as well as you're usually keeping around you know, your, your first units. And it's way, way easier to get a level three tier one unit than it is anything else. As you know, the pool for tier ones at the start is basically you're gonna have to get a few of them. It's just way easier to get tier threes. And since we're keeping our tier 1s for the entire game, like the, uh, whatever we buff with the otter, and usually the otter itself, if we're going with bisons, you can also definitely sell the otters late game. Don't, you know, don't, don't be scared to sell them, unless, obviously, you have a bison and you want to keep your level 3 around. But otters don't really do anything. They just kind of sit around and they suck, and they're only really good to buy them. So after you get a level 3, you can't buy them anymore. So don't be scared to sell the hell out of those motherfuckers. Just get them out of there. And here, this guy is trying to crab strap me. Uh, but he sold his main unit. I don't know how he got 20 HP on his crab, but he has no units with 20 HP. Something's fishy there, unless he got a... I don't know what happened. I guess he was just buffing it with food with a rabbit. Kind of dumb. Don't do that. Okay. Listen, the crab is only good if you use the otter. I'm telling you. If you don't use the otter, the crab is bad. Don't do that. The crab is not good unless you use the otter strat. And here we're just kind of destroying everything. Um, these two games were kind of complete stomps. Uh, as you know, the otter strat did exactly what the otter strat is supposed to do. You get two or three otters, you put the thing up front, you buff them, then you get a crab, you get a kangaroo, and then you just destroy everything. Um, it's really all it takes. Crab or kangaroo, uh, as long, the, really the only RNG dependent thing is the start. So if you don't get any otters in the first round or two, uh, you're pretty much screwed. That's why I usually don't try to force this, because if I don't get an otter by, you know, six gold on round one, then it's probably not going to work, but the thing is, most of the time, you usually do get at least one otter. And it doesn't really matter what the other unit is. It could be a mosquito, it could be an ant, it could be a duck, it could be a beaver. It doesn't really matter. I have many videos on my channel of me just destroying absolutely everything with a duck, with a beaver, with whatever. And it's not even in question, by the way. This is absolutely the strongest strat in the game. I literally could probably win 10, 12 games in a row with this. I'm not kidding. Easily probably win 12 games in a row using this strat. The thing is, it's kind of boring because it locks you into doing the same thing every game. You build around one big unit, and then you steamroll. So you can't do fun, silly things like, you know, uh, hedgehogs, or rhinos, or five bisons, or whatever. Or badgers. You can't really use badgers. You can still put a badger in the back. Badger in the back's never bad. But you can't do front badger. So that's kind of why I don't use, use this a lot. But if you're trying to win, this is definitely the way to do it. This is incredibly OP. Uh, obviously. And I, like this seems like an exaggeration. Like I found my best gameplays. And this is the peak of the game. Or this strategy. But it's really not. Uh, this is literally just me playing three games. And the first game, I died at round nine. Because I ran into four skunks in a row. I'm not kidding. Four skunks in a row. Okay, I got really mad. I think I still have the video. I might put it in here. I don't know if I do. I probably deleted it because I've been running out of hard drive space. I really got to get like a new hard drive, but all I have is an SSD because I hate mechanical hard drives because it takes so long to load things, man. I hate mechanical hard drives. Why do mechanical hard drives have to suck so much penis? And yeah, that's it.